Yes. It is a case that seasoned law enforcement prosecutors and physicians say they have never seen before in a warning tonight. The details of this story are graphic. The parents, instead of picking up the phone to make a call and say, hey, we need some help over here to treat our daughter's condition, they just let her rot away on a sofa. Inside, 36-year-old Lacey Fletcher was found so neglected she was melted into the leather sofa. She had open wounds to the bone from her feet all the way to her buttocks and essentially had gnats and maggots all around her body. She was literally fused to the sofa. Grand jury indicted Clay and Sheila Fletcher on second degree murder charges. The mother literally had her recliner next to the sofa where her daughter was literally rotting away. The medical neglect, uh, which led to uh, chronic malnutrition, acute starvation, immobility, the cubitus ulcer formation, osteomyelitis, which is bone infection, which led uh, finally to sepsis. Thirty-six-year-old Lacey Fletcher was a Louisiana native living her life, but living for her wasn't like the average person. Everything about her later years was a nightmare, to say the least, a horror story that turned darker and darker the more details were exposed of how she suffered as she aged. Her agony concluded on January 3, 2022, when a phone call from her mother alerted authorities about her lifeless daughter. But what occurred before the call and after authorities arrived at the scene paints a gruesome and merciless image of how the ones meant to protect, nurture and love her turned out to be the ones who inflicted what those at the scene called gruesome. Our story begins at the climax of Lacey Fletcher's life. The day is January 3rd, 2022. The time is 2 a.m., Authorities received a call from someone by the name of Sheila Fletcher of Slaughter, Louisiana. That caller was the mother of Lacey Fletcher, and she contacted police to report that her daughter had stopped breathing. First to the scene were the fire department, sheriffs and deputies, within about 30 seconds of the call. From the onset of seeing Lacey Fletcher, it was obvious she was already deceased, but also the situation turned into a potential crime scene. That prompted a call to be placed to the coroner of East Feliciana Parish, Dr. Ewell Bickham. Dr. Bickham took one step into the house and his senses were instantly engulfed in a pungent and putrid smell of feces, urine and rot. Upon walking further to the place where Lacey Fletcher's lifeless body was, he found the source of the smell, but it was the sight of her condition that turned his stomach. Lifeless in a cesspool of urine and feces, Lacey was dead. Dr. Bickham was so overwhelmed by the state of her body that he could barely stay at the scene. Well, I first walked in the house, it smelled of feces, fecal material, however you want to put that politely. It, it stunk. When I got to the body, the individual was basically sitting in a, in a hole filled with liquid stool and urine. Video footage obtained by DailyMail.com shows the moment Dr. Bickham entered the home. Those privy to the footage describe his reaction, stating, he is breathing heavily as he moves the camera to the gap behind the sofa and the wall. A large wet patch is on the floor directly behind Lacey's body, which he believes is urine. This is a man who for years has dealt with dead bodies and crime scenes as a career, yet he was brought to the point of nightmares over what he saw at the Fletcher home. In an interview with the WBRZ investigative unit, Dr. Bickham stated that in his 30 years as a practicing physician, he's never seen anything like it. In fact, his exact words were, I couldn't eat for a week, and I cried for a week. That is telling of the image of Lacey Fletcher's condition. I've never seen anything like this that literally turned my stomach as bad as it did. It, it, made, it got me to be emotional. And I'm a pretty strong person. He saw inside the house, which detailed descriptions after examinations would reveal how much she suffered in what authorities would call a heinous crime. Dr. Bickham recorded 
the official time of death as 3.07 a.m. on January 3, 2022, but said he believes she was deceased at least 24 to 48 hours prior. He would get the body back to the Jefferson Parish Forensic Center to perform an autopsy, and sure enough, Lacey's death was labeled a homicide. Further, findings in the autopsy concluded that the cause of death stemmed from severe medical neglect, which led to chronic malnutrition, acute starvation, immobility, acute ulcer formation, and osteomyelitis, which is bone infection that led finally to sepsis. It's the worst form of medical neglect I've ever seen. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know any other adjectives or adverbs to add to that. Coroner Dr. Ewell DeWitt Beckman III says Lacey had social anxiety and severe autism. And as he explains the cause of her death, one can only imagine Lacey's suffering. Medical neglect, uh, which led to uh, chronic malnutrition, acute starvation, immobility, the cubitus ulcer formation, osteomyelitis, which is bone infection, which led and it, uh, finally to sepsis. Lacey Fletcher depended on her parents to take care of her as she was diagnosed with social anxiety and severe autism. Initially, her medical issues weren't hindering her from leading a normal life. Neighbors recall Lacey being a normal enough kid, growing up playing and being active in school. Classmates of Lacey also share similar stories. One stated, we went to a small private school with Lacey from kindergarten to ninth grade. Lacey was far from nonverbal and immobile during those years. While she did have some learning differences, which was later diagnosed as autism, she had friends, played on a volleyball team and bowling league, had slumber parties, loved going to Disney, and most of all loved music, especially country music and Mariah Carey. She had an outstanding memory and could recite so many facts. Former classmates said Lacey began to retreat into isolation in her teens as her autism accelerated and was homeschooled after ninth grade. This sounds similar to accounts from neighbors. Only when news of her death broke did they realize she was inside the entire time while they assumed she had moved away. I asked him one day a couple of years ago because I hadn't seen her. He said, yeah, she, she still stays here. One interviewed neighbor told reporters that the last time the Fletchers allowed persons inside their home was around 15 years ago. Oh yeah, I've been in the house, yeah. When was the last time you were in their house? Mm. 15, 16, 17 years ago. Because me and him at one time was on the planning and zoning committee at the town. So it could be around the time Lacey Fletcher's condition plummeted even further and the treatment she was being given began deteriorating. One would ask, how did Lacey Fletcher get to the condition she did when her parents were living in the same home? That was also the burning question on the minds of authorities. According to claims of the parents Sheila and Clay Fletcher, from 2011 to 2012, Lacey didn't want to leave the house and had not been to a doctor. They further stated that Lacey was able to communicate with them and never complained. According to their recollection, Lacey developed some degree of Asperger's syndrome after ninth grade when she started being homeschooled. They insisted during an interview with law enforcement that she was the one who chose never to leave the couch and to relieve herself there or on a nearby towel. Not only that, but the couple was adamant that Lacey was of sound mind to make her own type of decisions, adding that she never complained of her sores and that Sheila would routinely clean them. But authorities found that hard to believe by the condition Lacey was in as she died, which the coroner, from her wounds, said it had to be painful. Sheila Fletcher told detectives that last fall, Lacey began eating less. As per her recollection, Lacey ate half a sandwich and Cheetos on January 2nd, 2022. Sheila Fletcher told detectives she last saw her daughter alive at 10 p.m. that night and awoke in a chair in the living room to find her dead. The coroner's office chimed in on the events before Lacey passed, and apparently the couple was out having fun on a weekend trip while Lacey was slowly dying. This means they left her by herself in that state and continued with their life while she drew her last breaths. The investigative unit learned the last time Lacey Fletcher saw a physician was in 2002 when she was 16 years old. So sadly, 
For nearly 20 years, she was left unchecked and sources said there were no health insurance claims on her record. Initial reports would state that Lacey Fletcher had developed what was known as locked-in syndrome, which is a rare brain disorder that completely paralyzes the body. However, Dr. Bickham debunked that claim as not being true. The autopsy analysis determined that Lacey Fletcher was left to rot away on the couch for an astounding 12 years, urinating, defecating, and starving in that position without medical help and proper care. The following details from the official reports paint the horror that took place within the household. Warning is given to those unable to stomach graphic descriptions as the details may be hard to take in. The report states that pictures and footage at the alleged crime scene show Lacey's emaciated and feces covered body buried deep into a wide hole in the couch melted into the foam. The wooden floors around the rotting couch were saturated in urine and feces and were buckling underneath the sofa. Lacey appears almost buried up to her shoulders in the wide and deep hole in the sofa that her bony body has worn over the years, rubbing away the cushioning. She is slumped over on her left side with her right arm, across the top half of her emaciated body near her neck. She is naked apart from a small blue patterned t-shirt which is pulled up on her chest and does not cover her breasts. Her eyes are wide open, staring. Her mouth is also open, revealing what appears to be a full set of front teeth. Her legs are pulled up and crossed underneath her, ironically in a way that people can make themselves comfortable. But in Lacey's case, it was a posture of a bid to survive. Her face is covered in large and angry red blotches. Excrement is smeared over almost all of her body, shoved on her face, chest and abdomen. It is matted into her hair that's also filled with maggots. It is even inside her ears, her nostrils and under her fingernails. The brown leather sofa that served as her prison is alongside a wall with a gap of about 18 inches. Astonishingly, to the couch's right side is a grey commode and a neat pile of clothes. And to the front, only a few feet away, is a cluttered low black table. It is strewn with lotion bottles, some talcum powder, a pack of wipes, a nasal spray, a box with a lid that had a child's photo on it, and other items that make it appear the Fletchers had the resources to clean their stricken only child, but chose not to. Lacey weighed just 96 pounds when discovered dead in the early hours of January 3rd. Close-ups show the flesh on her buttocks appears to be literally worn or eaten away from the 12 years that she hadn't moved from the couch. There are large raw yellow areas where the skin has disappeared. Other back and buttock areas are so blackened it is impossible for a person to identify any shape or form. She was covered in maggots and had several ulcers on her underside. Bed sores were about her body, some can be seen straight down to the bone. This wasn't even the extent of her deteriorated condition. The autopsy by Dr. Bickham revealed that sofa foam and feces were found in her stomach, which means something that's heartbreaking to even consider. Lacey Fletcher, even through all her other painful ailments, was also enduring gut-crunching starvation, so much so that she began eating the sofa foam filled with feces to try to supplement her debilitating hunger. As if that wasn't enough, she was also suffering from bacterial infections and tested positive for COVID-19. Lacey Fletcher sat in the couch for 12 years, immobile until her condition deteriorated to her death. I can't begin to imagine the grueling pain, discomfort and lack of love she felt with her parents right there, living in that filth and nauseating smell, watching their daughter in that condition like it was a normal day in their life. In fact, Investigative reporter Chris Nakamoto of WBRZ shed light on one piece of additional detail that really displayed how unremorseful and utterly nonchalant Lacey's parents were to her suffering. The mother literally had her recliner next to the sofa where her daughter was literally rotting away. And so it was positioned, the sofa was positioned in front of the TV and she apparently had been there for possibly up to 10 years or so. The tragedy is even more of a mystery, as reports state that her mother, Sheila Fletcher, worked for authorities who might have helped her daughter. 
According to reports, she was a police and court clerk in the small nearby city of Baker, and more recently, an assistant to the city prosecutor in Zachary, a slightly larger community also nearby. The mother was also on Slaughter's Board of Aldermen, but quit on January 24th, following four years of service and three weeks after the horror discovery. Her father, Clay Fletcher, is an officer of the non-profit Baton Rouge Civil War Roundtable, which has a mission to educate and foster an appreciation for the sacrifices made by all during the Civil War. The father would also resign from office in the organization when news began spreading of his daughter's case. The program director, John Potts, was shocked and appalled that the man he'd known for six years was hiding that side of him behind closed doors. Her father resigned as president of the Baton Rouge Civil War Roundtable Tuesday. The program director, John Potts, has known Clay Fletcher for roughly six years and is stunned by the news. Shock, because you know, it, it doesn't match with my experience of him. He's uh, completely different than what you would expect someone like that to be. The details are horrific. There's no doubt about that. And. I can't conceive of how something like that could even happen. Neighbors and friends say they never knew they had a daughter. He mentioned that she passed away in January, and that was all I know of that. The news spread like wildfire. No one expected the people they thought were kind, prominent members of the community would be at the center of such a cruel occurrence. Shocked. Very surprised. I just, just never, I thought, you know, I just never thought that anything, you know, like that would happen here, you know? What do you think should happen to the parents up there in East Feliciana Parish? Jail. <laughs> it, it was a crime. Literally, someone lost their life. Investigations continued, but according to District Attorney Sam D'Aquila, the Fletchers were not yet taken into custody as they were not considered a flight risk and they wanted to gather proper evidence before making their move. That would change approximately four months later, in early May 2022, when a formal indictment on charges of murder in the second degree was issued against Sheila Fletcher and Clay Fletcher. For this type of crime, second degree murder, which is an intentional murder, manslaughter, which is a murder that does not require intent, but it's combined with other factors like cruelty to the infirm. So the second degree is pretty much the highest charge that could have been uh, produced today. So, so that's what the grand so jury decided? Correct. Yeah, second degree murder. So what Two happens now? Uh, what happens now, they're going to be arrested, and I think the sheriff is better in a position to explain what's going to happen at that the, point. The warrants have been cut. The judge will sign them shortly, and they will be arrested this afternoon. And the parents of the young woman who died on their couch after what appears to be years of abuse are being charged with second degree murder. A grand jury in East Feliciana made the call after reviewing the evidence presented by the sheriff and coroner. NBC Local 33's investigative reporter Ariel Salk is live outside of that courthouse. And Ariel, what's next for these parents? Now that Clay and Sheila Fletcher are charged with second degree murder, they have been arrested and that was after months after their daughter had passed away. Both parents were held in East Feliciana Parish Jail, with bonds set at $300,000 each. A little over 24 hours after her arrest, Sheila Fletcher walked out of East Feliciana Parish Jail with her bondsman at 10.30 p.m. Tuesday night, May 3rd, 2022. Her husband, Clay, remained another night behind bars because his bond money could not be arranged in time. The following day at 10.25 a.m., she would return with the funds to have her husband's bond sorted, after which he was released and they both left in a waiting pickup truck. That wasn't all. Not only did their arrest not last long, but their criminal charges didn't last either. On May 8, 2023, the Fletcher's defense attorney, Stephen Moore, filed a motion to quash the indictments against his clients, arguing the DA's office served documents that were different from those filed with the local court clerk. According to reports, Moore said the official version included six tweaks that weren't properly amended from the indictments produced in discovery. Further, he stated, in sum, the indictment in the record is either a substitute or a different indictment returned by the grand jury. Most notably, 
Moore argues De Quilla's office improperly added verbiage from cruelty to the infirmed law, which isn't a lesser included charge of second degree murder. He says that amounted to attempting to create a new crime. This meant, according to Moore, the district attorney seeks to convict the Fletchers of second degree murder by improperly amending the indictment so the state can attempt to convict by a lesser burden. In Moore's filing, he states De Quilla's office made handwritten amendments to the indictments. Several were minor tweaks, like Clay Fletcher's birth date was corrected and the layout of the pages was modified. Moore also argued that the original version did not include a signature from the grand jury for person, as required by law to validate the charging documents. That signature was added later on the indictment submitted for the official record. Given his findings, a court agreed. On May 30th, 2023, District Judge Catherine Betsy Jones tossed the second-degree murder indictments against the surviving Fletchers due to defective language in those charging documents. Persons following the case were in an uproar and many took to online platforms to act in a call for justice, starting petitions and initiating social media campaigns to urge law enforcement to not let the case be swept under the rug. District Attorney Sam DeQuilla agreed with the emotions of the people and vowed that he would remain undeterred in getting justice for Lacey Fletcher. DeQuilla promised to convene a second grand jury on June 19, 2023, the same day the defendant's trial was originally set to begin. He told media giant The Advocate that the new indictments would correct the issues that had the previous thrown out. The DA also predicted the process would play out quite a bit quicker now because the defense had previously been apprised of all the state's information in the case. With resolve and persistence to do right by Lacey Fletcher, De Aquila pushed on and his determination paid off. On June 19, 2023, the Fletchers were indicted again. They were then re-arrested and although they were again able to post bond, their charges this time aren't going away. The DA predicts the murder trial will begin this fall. In his own words, he states, we will ensure there is justice for Lacey and the public knows that caregivers will be charged for neglecting or abusing a person in their care. Lacey Fletcher didn't deserve the treatment she got at home. If her parents were unable to help, the correct thing is to reach out for help. As parents, it was their job to ensure their daughter had the care she needed. Instead, they continued enjoying life while she rotted away right before their eyes. If they are convicted of the murder in the second degree, the Fletchers have ahead of them a sentence that carries the weight of life in prison. May justice be served for Lacey Fletcher. At the very least, her pain and torment is over. This has been an episode of Mysteries, where true stories from around the world come to life. What stories come next? Like, share, comment and subscribe to never miss what intriguing chronicles will be told.